Well, hello, everybody. My name is Sarah, and this is Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto, but it's so much more. It's got the hacks and the tools and the, you know, recognition of Ms. Slick. If you don't have a Ms. Slick, you're lucky, but my Ms. Slick lives right here and can talk right into this ear. And funny, I'm deaf on so many on so many other areas, but Ms. Slick gets through loud and clear. So somebody was commenting about how they, you know, they find that waiting after they finish eating, just sitting, you know, in my case, I move over to the couch with the TV because I'm a guilty pleasure TV kind of gal, sitting for 15 minutes and the food does finally register from the brain down here to the brain up here. And Ms. Slick is just cast aside like a lock of hair. She doesn't have a chance. But I always, not always, but <clears throat> there are times that I don't want to be a good little girl and compliant. And I want more. And it has lots to do with anxiety, addiction, boredom, and just being an addict that wants more. Why? Because that's how it is. And so when I go through that, I find, now if I really, really, really want to be compliant with what I put in the chronometer for the day, then I'm am going to just sit there. But there's other times where it's like I've had my Faye yogurt, the full fat one. I've had <clears throat> the guitar dark chocolate chips on it. I had the Teddy's organic peanut butter, 14 grams, one tablespoon added to it as my end of the meal. And it still registers as I'm still hungry. And that's when I pull in my good cultured um, cottage cheese. I buy the green label, which is 6% milk fat, so divine. And I buy the 4%, which is whole milk. And so those two are my state. Oh, and the good culture. I want to get the raspberry, but I haven't seen it around here. But I do get the pineapple one, which is 100 calories, 2% milk fat. And so meanwhile, while everything is processing from the important brain, which is my gut, to my head, then as I slowly eat the cottage cheese, which is not a calorie wrecking if you're into calories like I kind of am um, it's not a calorie wrecking thing it's just a nice little container it's good for your gut it's you know high fat high protein and it does the job right that's how I figure it and cottage cheese and yogurt um, you know for those that get bothered by um, dairy products it's it's not like other ones. It seems to, I don't know, it just seems to kind of work for me. So that's, that's my hack. That's how I treat it. And then by the time I finish that cute little cottage cheese container, then I'm good to go. But there are just those nights when the full button isn't getting reached. And it took me a long time to identify my full button. And that finally happened. I was really in a, in a couple of month run of having nothing but the big ass salads um, from Mark Sisson and also the big RBG, really big salad lady. I can't think of her name right now, but she lost a whole bunch of weight from having really big salads too. And so that's how it goes in my world. And I know that I want to load up and they say that when you have your one meal a day and you feast, it isn't for behind you. It's so you have the fuel to go the next 23, 24 hours if you do clean intermittent fasting like I do. And that is what has worked for me for the past year. It took care of the um, excess poundage, those last few persnickety pounds. It it works for me in ways that like nothing else ever did. And the clean part about the clean intermittent fasting is black only unflavored coffee and unflavored waters. And it's as simple as that. So I think 
that it's the clean intermittent fasting that is just as important as the items that you choose to eat. Now I know that um, bottled mineral water has just, it, it's like champagne cost these days. So a lot of people are going back to just, you know, your own brand of water and um, having that. I don't buy the um, plastic waters like Poland Springs and things like that. I just, we have a triple filter in our house and that takes care of that. And sometimes I have some salt along with it. I've got my little salt lick like a horse. <laughs> and um, I will have that along with the water. And that works too. And if you are finding that, you know, you think you're hungry and you, you planned your OMAD, you're really trying to have just the OMAD and you've planned it. And it's noon and you've planned it for four. Have some salted water and see if that makes a difference. <clears throat> Excuse me. I also know one woman, one um, hack that she she put the timer on, like an old fashioned timer. She put the timer on her stove, and it, because it was just making her crazy, she just thought she had to have something, and so it would have wrecked her fast. We all know that we don't want to wreck our fast. We want to you know, have a clean intermittent fast when we, so when we get to the feast, you know, cause you know, you're going to feel good if you did it, if you suffered through it. Right. And so she sets the oven timer for like 10 or 15 minutes. And, and if all she can do is be a clock watcher, that's all she can do. But hopefully that urge to have something to eat, to, you know, wreck, the nice fast that you've gotten 12 or 13 hours into isn't wrecked. And so, you know, she can get by it with just having the salted water. Now, those that are on a pay grade and knowledge grade level higher than me will say that the magic happens after 17 or 18 hours with the fast. That's when things like autophagy and things like that happen. And so, you know, keep in mind that that is the magical hour from what they say. And so, um, you know, if you can get past that, I am not a window person. You've heard me say that. I have my one and done OMAD and it's abundant and it's a feast and it works. And you can see some of my pictures here on my channel, which will show you how it works. I'm not afraid of fat. I'm in my seventies. I love ghee. I love Kerrygold butter. I love my avocado oil, and so I'm not afraid to use them. It's not that I'm crazy liberal with them. I just include them. And I did see a crazy video where the person was saying, if you have something like a bread, do have the butter with it because it will balance out what your gut is receiving. And so the higher fats help with the whole digestion. I don't know. Go figure. I'll... I'll take it. I believe whatever, whoever that person was and what they said. So trust your body. If you're still really, really hungry, you know, I move from the, you know, my hack of the Faye with the dark chocolate chips and the Teddy peanut butter. And then I go on to the good culture. And then by then, when all is said and done, my body has said, okay, Ms. Slick, you know, shut up. You're satisfied from having those things and you will move on. And if I, as I look at my meal in my chronometer for the day, there's ample stuff there, but I am an anxiety and emotional eater. And so that's always the first thing that I'll turn to. Sometimes I honor it and sometimes I like, you know, it's that gnat, that summer gnat, just going, <laughs> so it is what it is. And we deal with it one day at a time, one meal at a time. But I don't want to wreck my fast. That's the most important thing. I want that clean, intermittent fasting for those 23 hours to get to that OMAD because I know that's the magic of it for me. So anyway, I'm so glad you're here. My name is Sarah and this is Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto Foods, but also the tips and tricks of how to do the clean, intermittent fasting, what works for me, what I hope works for you. Share below if, if something works for you and you swear by it, 
share it because one of us out there might read that and say, oh, that's what I've been hoping for. Let me try that. Anyway, I will see you here the next time. Bye-bye for now.